What's up, y'all? Got a banger from men only. Let's get straight into it. Get ready with me to file for a divorce from the love of my life. Stupid. She looks like she looks like if Earthworm Jim had a sister. Shots fired! Shots <laughs> fired! I'm ready. I've been I'm getting ready. ready for months. Several months. Then why are you sad? How appropriate is it that it is storming today and it is such a like gloomy, ugly day? <laughs> A lot of you have asked, like, what's up with, you know, is everything okay? How are you? Okay, I haven't seen hubby in a while. Woo. And, um, it sucks. And I'm so sad and disappointed that we didn't make it to forever. Because you didn't I want to work for it. You divorced him. What are you talking about? I love him with my whole heart. He is my best friend. He is my favorite him. person on the planet. But you divorced him. And. What? The concept of duality sometimes is a mind fuck. Like, how can what? you love somebody so much but not be able to be married to them? Because um, you're weak. How can... And you're a child. Shots fired! Shots fired! An adult would realize that being an adult is hard. Here's the thing, dude. You gotta choose your heart. And I know I don't mean like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean like that. Choose your heart. Being fat is hard. Being single is hard. Being in a relationship is hard. Being alone is hard. Being around a lot of people is hard. Pick your heart. And the thing is, these ladies, they act like children. This is why I say women grow old, they never grow up. You gotta choose your heart, honey. She chose her heart. All right, you wanna be divorced? Live with it. Somebody be so good to you and so bad for you at the same time. We will continue to co-parent my granddaughter together. Just so we... good to you, but bad for you. What? That is so dumb. Stupid. We have been for, we haven't lived together in several months and we've been doing it, co-parenting, figuring it out, and we'll continue to do that. That's the plan. Goodness gracious. Um. <sighs> I, mm, She's I'm giving me. You're a single mom. You said I'm a house kid. If it's here or not. Are you single and pregnant? <laughs> single mom now kind of mourned and grieved this loss um mourned and grieved for a long time what but i think the finality and i'm sure i'll have another moment you know when everything is final but the finality of actually filing the papers is sobering it's yeah. crazy how right after i walk out the courtroom the rain stops the clouds roll away and the sun comes out it's gonna be all right Women Here really do again. be thinking they're the center of the universe. These ladies really be thinking they are the absolute main character and that the sky cleared up because of her. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, it's called a weather. It has nothing to do with you. She's realizing what she threw away. God. Unfortunately for her, that's a reality she has to face alone. Mm -hmm. Something that I learned early on is that you'll never have to question when it's time to leave a relationship if you go into the relationship knowing what you absolutely will not accept. So when my husband and I started dating, ex-husband now, soon to be ex-husband, when we started dating, we had a shared note that was a list of deal breakers. So I had a list of deal breakers. I think that's a red flag. Let me know in the comments. Do you think a list of deal breakers is a, is a red flag? To me, I think it's childish. It's the whole tit for tat. Here's the thing. An eye for an eye makes the world blind. If you're just going to go tit for tat, we, me and Cass call it nickel and diming each other because it happens. It happens. You're like, well, I did this for you, and then you didn't do this for me, and I did that. You just, you're nickel and diming. Stop nickel and diming each other. Having a shared note talking about, um, what, is, what does she call it? Deal breakers, I guess? That's nickel and diming. How you can't do this. You can't, like, you're dictating what someone else can do. That's toxic in a relationship. You have to compromise and sacrifice in a relationship. These women are egotistical, narcissistic, and selfish. This is why they can't thrive in an actual relationship with another man, because they can't think of themselves first. Shots fired! Shots fired! When you're in a relationship, it's a collective. It's no longer just you, honey. There's a non-negotiables for him, and he had one for me. And that list was to say, like, listen, before you even try it, if any of these things occur, just know there will not be a conversation. There will not be a forgiving period. There will not be, I'm done. Obviously, some of the items on the list are very common sense items, like don't cheat, don't put your hands on me, don't put your hands on the kids, etc. But then there are other less tangible items that I feel like people tend to dance on the boundaries or live on the line, leaving you constantly wondering like, dang, 
is it okay? Should I leave? Is that a non-negotiable? Is he? Mm, See, exactly. It, it goes to this mental gymnastics of figuring out what's white, what's right, and what's what's white and what's wrong. What's white? <laughs> <laughs> you, you give somebody an inch, and you let them live on that line. They will take a mile, and eventually they will cross way over that line. And for me. I knew going into it what I will not tolerate or accept. And so I knew once that line was completely crossed, because I done gave you too many chances living on that damn line. What did he do that couldn't be fixed? <sighs> That's what I'm saying. Like, these women would rather just say, I created a line and you crossed it and, and blah, blah, blah. Like, you have to be an adult. Here's the thing. Dude, here's the thing. If you were at work and somebody did something that made you uncomfortable, what would you more than likely do? You would go and talk to them like an adult to come to a common resolution. But what do these women do? They say, well, that's a line and you can't cross it and I'm over it and I told him. You have to discuss these things like an adult. Ladies, we can't be a mind reader. Let me know in the chat, let me know in the comments. Guys, have you ever had a chick that's like, well, you should have known what I wanted. You should have known. You should have been able to tell. I can't read your freaking mind, shoddy. You gotta tell me what's going on. Talk to me like an adult. Converse with me. Educate me a little bit. Let's learn. Messy. You waste no time. I told you that's my best friend, right? Y'all thought I was playing? See, I don't think I know that you sliding in the DM <laughs> about all the friend requests and the views and the searches. Motherfuckers who know how to reach him, reaching him. <laughs> and to think I thought we was friends. I was sharing this with you in confidentiality. Now y'all trying to go for- Earthworm Gina. Shots fired! Shots fired! But my man, my ex-man. I was just playing. I don't really Actually, have you guys ever seen a bug's life? Shots fired! Shots fired! <laughs> the cricket army. <laughs> but I just want to say a few things. Number one, no, he did not cheat. Okay. You did. Number two, we were separated for several months before I filed for divorce. Not living together, separated. Yes, he knew that I was filing for divorce the day that I filed for divorce. Yes, he knew that I filed for divorce right after I filed for divorce. But we had talked about telling the kids, like, have you talked to your kids? Have you talked to your kids? We, you know, we both went about that differently, whatever. Wait, and so I, you are a single mom now. I love it. You're a single mom. I did address with him, like, at some point, I am going to talk about this on social media as I do everything else. I just want to be cognizant of- This is why you shouldn't put your entire life on social media. And that's rich coming from somebody who does YouTube, but like, I don't tell you guys a lot of personal business. This lady is literally airing out all of her dirty laundry for everybody to see. Nobody wants to smell that laundry. <laughs> Nobody wants to smell it or see it. Keep it in your own dirty house. Keep it on that one chair. You guys know what I'm talking about? If, if it's not like completely clean, but it's not completely dirty, where does it go? The chair. You guys know what I'm talking about. All of the people involved, whatever. So all of those discussions were had. However, I do realize that I'm more comfortable <laughs> healing out loud than maybe everybody else's. And I don't think he was as prepared for the influx of <laughs> these hoes as I knew <laughs> what was gonna happen. So per usual, I'm gonna have to figure out how to heal and live loudly while still respecting the um, privacy of others. Stupid. And all that jazz. Now you knew this 304 were gonna be thirsty AF. <laughs> what exactly did he do that couldn't <laughs> be fixed? I mean, come on. Uh, you know this thirsty 304. Oh my god. Uh, men only be cracking me up, bro. Let's see what this I think this next clip is a pearl clip. Uh, let's get to it. Good lord. In the past, women stayed for money. In the past, women stayed because of culture. Mm. Now you're paid to leave. The average marriage just it's not a good experience for most men mm. because they don't get anything out of it. Facts. Most men that have been married over a certain amount of time did not have happy marriages. And marriage seems to be going. Hey, shout out to Pearl, but Pearl, what are you doing with your hair, baby girl? Way for the middle class and be something for the upper class, and that's it. In the past, women stayed for money. In the past, women stayed because of culture. In the past, women stayed because of religion. Now you're paid to leave. Now your failure rate is well above 50%. Mm -hmm. Your chance of success is, is roughly 10%. But. I do think that the only marriage that's left is the purest marriage that you could possibly have. The people that make it work, you know they're there because they love each other. The people that the people that don't want to get married, oh, I understand it. Yeah. I completely understand. There's no good reason for a guy to do that in 2024. None. Oh, the bad, odds though. are completely stacked against you. Oh yeah. The laws are completely stacked against you. The judicial like mm -hmm. everything is completely stacked against you. If you do get married, I would get a prenup. 
I would do all of that. But my conclusion is the couples that make it work and figure it out in this mess of an environment have the most pure form of marriage that there's ever been. Marriage these days really is but like a lottery. And the thing is, marriage used to be you had to do it with a religion tied to it because then it was to serve a greater purpose. But people now don't even have a purpose to themselves. People now are slobs. They're lazy. They have no discipline. They have no structure. They run amok. Their kids run around and disrespect them. Bro, I want you to go back and think. In the good old days, remember when if your daddy popped you in the mouth, you respected him? You remember them days when you was afraid of the repercussions of your grandpa or your daddy coming around and smacking the taste out your mouth and slapping you so hard your head did a 360? I remember back in those days, boy, that, that when it was a thing. But the thing is, nowadays kids are just disrespectful. There's no respect no more. And see, that's the thing. We've lost that. Men don't respect women. Men don't respect, or women don't respect men. We don't even respect our elders. So how are we expected to come through and actually have a good relationship when kids aren't even taught respect? They're not taught discipline. I see kids nowadays like spitting on their parents, slapping their parents, yelling at them. I'm like, bro, I would have never, ever, ever raised my voice at a parent or someone that was older than me. I was always taught to respect my elders, always. I never was taught to be disrespectful at all. All the money. But that stuff, the thing about is, a lot of this stuff is not learned. Do enough. Spoiled. A lot of this stuff They're is left out of time. Worth it anymore. Let's go back. At the end of the day, if you get a good marriage, you're lucky. But the way things are going now, the odds are stacked. This is why I say, like, bro, work out every day, eat good, have discipline, and be your harshest critic. Because if you don't, you're going to run through life, and before you know it, you're going to be a bum. Married over a certain amount of time, did not have happy marriages. I found out that 80% of their wives gained 20 pounds or more in the first five years. I found out the average length of marriage is eight years. I found out that gray divorce is rising and a lot of the stats on marriage not being dead were a bit misleading because they keep, they include people that don't have not yet got divorced. And I realized that a lot of people want to sell their religion. They want people to convert to their religion and so they mislead you on the reality of the situation. Now, there is a silver lining and I'm gonna to get to it. I had a tweet detailing, so I interviewed a lot of men that were victims of divorce grape. And these are men that lost everything in divorce, mm. wives left, took the kids, took their money, lost their job, like just complete L, right? And I found out it was a common pattern that after the second child, a lot of these women stopped sleeping with their husband, a lot of men out here are bending over. It's true, man. And I think being in a sexless marriage is a one-way ticket to divorce. Um, if you aren't intimate with your partner, I just think that it doesn't, it doesn't get better after that. You have to have some sort of physical intimacy. I think Jordan Peterson talks about this. He's like, you ha need to at least have like 90 minutes a week where you're actually being physically intimate with your partner. Because if not, I believe if you don't use it, you lose it, bro. Like, if you're not flexing that muscle, and you know what muscle I'm talking about. <laughs> you're not flexing that. Men have needs, women have needs. It doesn't matter what age they get. This is why when women and men get divorced, like men go out and they buck the young girls, and chicks go out and they buck the young guys, because they still have that sexual fervor about themselves. They want to still go out there and be in the streets, you know? She's a runner, she's a track star. And it's real easy for these men to go out there and procure sausage, but for guys, it's a lot harder to get the beef flaps. It's just a little bit, it's a little bit tougher to get the tuna tunnels, the sausage wallets. The scrambled eggs between the legs, the pink tacos, the vertical smiles, the bearded axe wounds. You guys know what I'm talking about. It's just a little bit tougher for tuna tunnels. It's just, a, it's a little bit harder for us. <laughs> the gut lockers. I got them for days. I got them for days. Oh my God. I, I don't even know what I was talking about. As she's not ready to date you, here's exactly what you should say. Mm, okay. This is gonna be good. Thanks for letting me know. I wish you the best and leave it at that. Hey, that's good. Don't tell her that you'll wait around until she's ready yes, or don't. even try to change her mind. No. You owe it to yourself. To no, no, no. Take it a step further. Gaslighter. Gaslighter. <laughs> if a girl says, hey, I'm not really ready to date, it's like, good. I see you just as a friend. I would never date you. And she's like, wait, you wouldn't ever want to date me? Make her feel insecure, make her crave your validation, and then boom, you got her. It's as easy as that. Like, come on. That's how you do it. You don't go, no, because what, what, like, what did this girl say? Like, this is, this is just bad advice right here. 
This is why I also don't ever take dating advice from a girl because girls have rose colored uh, rose colored glasses on. Ready to date you? Here's exactly what you should say. Okay. Thanks for letting me know. I wish you the best. No, don't even say that. Don't even say that. Be like, okay, like, whoa, like, slow down. I would never date you. I see you just as a friend. <laughs> That's what you say. You turn it completely around and be like, ew, no, gross. Like, I see you like a sister. I would never want to date you, ever. Like, God. Like, high five, sis. <laughs> That's what you do. And leave it at that. Don't tell her that you'll wait around until she's ready or even try to change her mind. Definitely don't do this. You those. owe it to yourself to move on to someone who actually deserves your time, not someone who can't clearly... The thing is, universe owes you nothing. You don't deserve anything. What makes you think that you're so entitled that you deserve someone's time, energy, effort, or resources? How entitled do you have to be? You're not, you don't deserve anything. You, everything is earned. Respect is earned and rent is due every day. Everything is earned in this life. This is why this is bad advice. Someone that deserves, deserves, deserves your attention, deserves your time. Nobody, you don't deserve anybody's anything. What makes you so special that, other, that you think you deserve something? No, you gotta go earn it. They communicate their intentions or even string you along and having you think that there's a time that she will be ready. So get back out there and show her what she's about to miss. Some women love the attention and validation. Uh, I mean, this I appreciate her really trying to support the cause. Thanks, sis. Um, horrible advice. It's much better to manipulate and gaslight. <laughs> I don't know that's bad. I know it's bad. And you guys are gonna be like, Levi, but that's bad. I know, but the thing is, it works. I don't care what you guys think is nice. I don't care what you guys think is ethical, moral. I do things that get results. And you know what gets results? Manipulation, gaslighting, and being an asshole. I hate to say it, but it works. I never bagged a chick from being a nice guy. Ever, not once. Oh my God, you're so pretty, you're so nice, I love your hair, <laughs> ever. Never bagged a girl doing that. You know how I bagged a girl? Yeah, you're all right. I've had better. Mm. Right, do you think I'm pretty? I mean, maybe, maybe you're cute at best. Rank me one to 10, like a four. What do you like about me? I mean, you got a nice butt, I guess. Like I never, like you make them earn those compliments because the thing is, uh, how many guys did you know growing up that would just go up to a girl and be like, you're beautiful, baby. You're beautiful. <laughs> hey, hey, gorgeous. Like, bruh. You want her to crave those words, that, that gorgeous word and that beautiful word. I only drop those, even when, even when Cass gets ready nowadays. She'll get, and I'll be like, wow, baby, you look really pretty. You look cute. I save the beautiful and gorgeous because there's a delineation between cute, pretty, and gorgeous. And I want her to, when she does the effort and she puts all the makeup on and she does the dress and she's got the heels and she spent three hours and I call her beautiful, she really feels it. As opposed to when she slaps on a face of makeup 10 minutes, puts on a, a little cute outfit. That's cute to me. There's a line between those because the thing is, the more you throw out those beautiful and gorgeous words, the less they mean. The more you use those words, the less they mean. So stop dropping all these things on these girls because they don't care. Make them earn it. Guys, you got to remember, you are the prize out here. End the epidemic. Stop paying for OF. Stop watching corn. Start going to the gym, eating better, and consuming good content. Here's the three ways right now you can unbuck your life easily. Easily. Number one, go listen to As A Man Thinketh on Spotify. Number two, get in the gym. Number three, eat a whole food diet. Meat, veggies, and, and maybe some eggs. Simple as that. You want You want to slap on another one? Consume better content. Watch the Levi Nick Show. I'm here to help you guys out. Watch the Levi Nick Show. Loki, does somebody want a carrot? Sorry, I'm a little late on this. Ooh, he's licking his lips. Free. Sit. Wait. Free. Go to your place. But more moral of the story is, gents, is you have to love yourself before you can love anybody else. If you don't love yourself, what is what is somebody gonna come in and love about you if you don't even love yourself? You gotta have respect for yourself, admiration for yourself. But with all of that comes responsibility. You have to have discipline. You have to have structure. You have to have a plan. You can't just run amok and go around talking about, well, 
I'm just so defeated. I have such bad luck. What's crazier is, what's crazy is the harder I worked, the luckier I got. Results respond to effort. If you don't put in any of the work, you're not going to get any of the results. And here's the thing, dude. No matter what you're doing, I don't care if it's truck driving, you're working construction, a blue collar job, you're working an office nine to five, go into work every day thinking, how can I do my job more efficiently and how can I scale this? Start thinking way bigger than you're thinking right now. 10X your thinking every day. Go in, let's say you're, you know, let's say you're working a nine to five and you're making cold calls, right? You go in and you're like, whoo man, 50 calls a day is killing me right now. Go in and think, how can I make 250 calls and not burn out? Break it down over the day. See how you can maximize your time. Because the thing is, if you went from 50 calls a day to 250 calls a day, bro, you'd make so much more money. You'd feel better about yourself. And then if you started waking up early, going to the gym, going to work, getting home after work, working a five to nine. This is why I say, if you're in your early 20s, bro, you need to be working like 60 hours a week. I was, I was working a nine to five. I was coming home and working a five to nine. If you're older, you should be reaping the rewards of the work that you did when you were younger. In your 20s to 30s, you need to work yourself like a dog. In your 30s to 40s, you need to figure out what you're good at and start working on that. And then your 40s, you need to have had that figured out and you need to scale it. And then in your 50s, you should be reaping the rewards of all the hard work you've done for the past 30 years. That's really the plan. That's what you should do. It's what you should have on your mind when you're doing all these things. And if you're older than that, it's never too late to start. But the thing is, you're starting at a deficit because you're competing with younger guys that have more time than you. It's never too late to start. I started a YouTube channel nine months ago and look where we are right now. It takes time, gents. Put in the work and you'll get the effort, or you'll get the results. Hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Sorry, I was ranting there at the very end. Um, but I uh, hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. I will see you guys tomorrow, man. Peace.